Merrimack Conservation Commission. <clears throat> we have public comment, period. Come on up. If you could just sign in and tap the. I, I already turned it on. Okay, great. So I'm um, Teresa Martins, and my husband and I, Clark, live um, on 12 Coleman Path, which is right by the access to Greater Woods um, by the Beaver Pond, by the cul-de-sac. And I know you guys have heard from some of the other neighbor uh, folks who have been in, <laughs> and I just want to make sure that um, it wasn't just people who are literally right next to the access. Because we are, I would say our house is what, 100 yards maybe over to that. But here's the thing. So first of all, a little history, I guess. Um, we moved here four years ago. We were in a rush, but part of the reason we moved to Merrimack, a lot of the reason we moved to Merrimack was to be close to the trails. So they're important to us. We have a dog. We've had one for years and years. We walk the dog at least once a day through the trails, if not more. Um, we use, so we, we do actually use the trails a lot. Um, you know, I'm usually out there early morning. Um, and I guess from the, the hunting uses of Greater Woods, I get nervous. Um, and I have had couple experiences of actually going up into the trails and granted farther away from the homes but seeing hunters sitting you know r ready to shoot and going by them and just being like okay that's really not great <laughs> um, it's 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 unnerving and we hear shots around our house all the time um, which most of the time they're further away but they're not that far away um, a little more history. So I actually do have a hunting license. Um, I got it in New York many, many years ago. Um, I don't have a gun anymore because one day I went out with friends and didn't realize that the safety was off and was walking around with it. And that scared the crap out of me. Okay, and I'm conscientious. Like I, you know, I would never ever want to do that. You know what I mean? But I just was like, that just really bothered me. And I got to believe I'm not the only person who will do something that is not intentional like that, but could have something bad happen. So when it comes to, when it comes to the, the Greater Woods Trails around where we are, it's just, there's a lot of houses that back up to those trails. And there's a lot of people using those trails. Like, Okay, so at 7.30 in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning, I don't usually run into too many people. Um, but any other time you go out, usually I run into at least one or two other parties. So there's a lot of people out there, and I just think that common sense needs to prevail at some point and say that those two things might not be a good mix. And, and you know what, I have, like I said, I have nothing against hunting. I just think that there are places for it um, and I get real worried about it being so close to us. Like, that is not good at all. And on top of that, so when I said we're 100 yards away from the trails, so what happens is Coleman Path goes here. There's a little shoot of BB Lane, and then there's a, there's a um, circle. So the access is right at the end of the circle. It goes down and to the left and up. But the hunters will actually go, go in there, go down to the left, and then hitch a left because the marsh is there, and they'll end up in our backyard, which is like they are, there's no way that they're 100 yards from our house. No way. And they don't have anywhere to go because the, the marsh is there. You know what I mean? You, you'd be walking in it. But they don't know, and maybe, maybe they choose not to know. I, you know, I'm not saying, but maybe they unintentionally didn't realize that they were no longer on the conservation land. But I mean, even then, like that's their responsibility. Should to, prevail. Yeah, that's their responsibility. Have you called Correct. the Have you called the police? 
No, we haven't yet. Um, Th that's that's an enforcement issue when you should be calling the police. If they're on your private property and they're firing, you should call them the police because that's yeah. they need they required to have your permission to be on your property and discharge a firearm. It just it's it's so odd because you would never think it would happen. You know what I mean? It just doesn't even make sense to us. Um, because there's there's it feels like anyway there's plenty of places for people to go. You know what I mean? If uh, you know a hunter, yes, you maybe you got to get in the car and drive further, but at least you're not in somebody's backyard. <laughs> So I just, um, I think it's good for you guys to hear other people. Um, we love the conservation lands. Love, love, love them. You know, they're great. And we try to, we try to be good stewards. We, you know, pick up trash and do good things when we can. But Therese, it's Therese, right? Therese, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, now, are you, you're here voicing it, and, I, and we've had your other neighbors. Um, are you voicing just an opinion that you would like no hunting on any of the conservation land? Or are you <laughs> seeking some, somewhat of a buffer or, or something like that? So here's the thing. I did, so I listened to when, I think it was, what, three or four weeks ago when you guys had a bigger discussion on mm -hmm. this. Um, I, I did listen uh, to the meeting. I didn't come to the meeting. Um, personally, okay, so just from a my person, doesn't matter with anybody else. I think that there probably shouldn't be hunting on the conservation lands just because it's so residential now. Um, but at the same time, I understand, you know, and I heard you guys talk about the fact that there has been legal precedent that talks about rights. Um, and I get that. I just worry that, so even though there is legal precedent, evolution dictates change at some point. There's a lot of people using the trails. And it's because they're so nice. Like, people really enjoy them. Like, they're a great thing. Um, and at some, at some point, there needs to be the balance of common sense with the uses, I guess. Because um, I honestly feel like, I feel like there's real potential to have something bad happen. You know, and then, then, what does the town do, you know what I mean? Like, because the town allowed the hunting on the lands and somebody got hurt, what, you know, I don't know how all that plays out, um, but I can't believe it would be a great scenario for the town. Um, you know, it, it'd be nice if things didn't get to that point. That's all. Uh, I'm gonna make a suggestion to you, and you're before the right body on this issue, but also, um, I think that uh, you and several of your neighbors who have come in and made a great case, um, I think you need to all either organize and put something together with your names on it or whatever, but um, I think you need to reach out not only to us, but to the police department also. Um, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease in many ways, and, you know, and uh, one thing that's always needed is feedback. So if they've got a number of folks that they're hearing from maybe that will encourage them to put a little more effort in. Granted, not that they're busy, they're busy, but uh, this is an issue and we've heard from several people. So uh, I think the chief of police, it would be helpful if she heard from, uh, from all of you. All right, that's a, a great idea. In a concerted effort. That's a great idea. Okay, that's it. I just wanted you all to have at least another um, person. One thing we talked about, Teresa, too, was uh, we didn't know if it would be legal or not, but expanding the no shooting zone and uh, have no hunting on that trail that goes behind the houses yeah. and posting something also heading towards the stream behind where your house is. Yep, yep. Um, that was another option we yep. talked about, uh, which we'll talk about later, I guess. Teresa, as far as your property goes with hunters on your land, have you posted your property? I know no. you said there's some marsh, so. If there you, is, like, there's literally, or... yeah, there's no access. <laughs> so, and our our driveway goes back, like, I don't know, it's got to be 75 plus yards to our house. And we don't even have that much behind our house. And it goes down a hillside, and then you hit the marsh. You know what I mean? So there's just, uh, there's, like, just no reason for anybody to be back there, really. It's just somebody who might be a little lost or... 
you know, figured they, that it was all part of the trails and just come down and keep walking. Yeah, I just wonder if it might help you exert your rights as a landowner if you don't want the hunters there, even accidentally, you'll help delineate that boundary right. for them. Yeah, no, I suppose we can, because I, um, I know that the Bowers do that. Um, and they're actually technically, so there's Paul Labrie who lives, he borders, he, so here's the cul-de-sac, he sits here, the trail goes here, and then the Bowers are here, and then there's one more house between us and then we're here. Okay. So I do know the Bowers do that, so, you know, we can put up some signs back there. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice, sh maybe a short-term solution, but if you, like Pete was saying, um, if you combine with some neighbors and you all posted, it's going to be a more visible sign to some hunters that this isn't this isn't okay to be wandering around wherever here. It's, yeah, it's very yeah. clearly delineated. Mm -hmm. I better go further away. And right. you're going to have to post it to make it legally enforceable. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you. No, we'll do that. It just seems so silly, or seems so crazy. I guess you know what I mean. Like, yeah, the but de the default in New Hampshire is you can hunt unless it's posted. Really, it's state laws we're bumping up against here. It's right. Yeah. And some of the some of the houses, I mean, it's bordering the town, our town land, you know, on the cul-de-sac. Yeah, only so the Labrie's border the town land. The Everyone else, you, the Bowers, all that, that's all private property. Yeah, theirs is, yeah. But the yeah, yeah. the yeah. Labrie's is the only is the only. Um, also, uh, Nancy. Uh, the Phillips. Nancy Phillips Nancy. and. And Wait, uh, you, mean, you, mean, the, right, you mean further up? Yeah, but there's right. like yeah, right, right. Right. But, but I'm saying I'm, yeah. I'm thinking going north towards the Red Maple Trail. If the Labrie's is the only property on that side of the on road, on that side yeah. of the road, yeah, yeah. on the other yeah. side of the road, correct. Others. Understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So, so yeah. So if we stopped, if we started at Paul's property with the signs that says you know private property from this point, you know no hunting or whatever that would, and then and if yeah. they ignored that set of signs and then hit the next ones, they should. There were signs there. Then it's pretty obvious that they um, right. that they've gone through, and, and then and then the police, like like Pete mentioned, could would have something that they could right. do about yeah. it. So, all right, that's good. Well, that's um, well noted, and and we should do that as a group, the whole lot of us. I, I, um, I recommend it because more, it's not just an individual now, it's it's a group of individuals, isn't it? Right, and you've all identified yeah. an issue. Right. And it's important. <laughs> it's a quality of life issue for you guys, right. um, and I think that the I think the chief would be sensitive to that issue. Okay, great. And by the way, thank you because we love the trail. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, uh, yeah. I just have one last thing. I have a sure. map of your neighborhood with the current hunting boundaries, the 300 foot boundary. Yeah. Could you just point out uh, which house is yours? Remember how I, so that's see how I mentioned we don't have that much behind us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's funny because what happens with so you all probably can't see this very well, but um, so we live right here where the house goes way back towards the marsh, mm -hmm. and then the the property owners on Trowbridge actually back up. Oh, you're right. Yeah. To that. Yeah. So yeah. I can only post at a certain point. Yeah. When the as the hill goes down, I can only go so far. Then it's not mine anymore. Okay, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Eric, do you have a copy of that? Uh, yeah. I mean, you okay. can just have this one. Yeah, I said you probably should get a copy to. Oh. Probably, if you could send a copy to. Okay. If you're jealous of going to Mary. Mm hmm. Okay, so. There are no public hearings. Uh, one appointment today, and that's uh, Jeff Littleton. Welcome. Good evening, folks. Thank you. This is everyone. <coughs> Sign in here. Um, I'm just here to give you uh, an update on the ecological inventory of Greater Woods and answer any questions you may have and um, bring up a couple of items. Um, so we're pretty much rounding out the, the, the project. We're still looking for 
one of the individuals that we have a transmitter on. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of them went missing. The, actually, all three of them went missing. <laughs> Another road <laughs> turn. Yeah. We can't so we have three individuals, one male and two females that we have transmitters on, and they all sort of took off for the summer, um, but you think they'd take off for the winter instead. Um, so the, the male eventually found his way back to the property, but the two females, they stayed away for quite a while. I guess they found an interesting area, and we drove all around the property, around various wetlands, around greater woods, you know, doing by roadside, and just couldn't find mm -hmm. them. And when my intern went out there three, four weeks ago, uh, she found the male was still on site and one of the females, so there's still one female uh, MIA at this point. So she's actually going to be going back out there I don't know, within a week or so, and I would suspect that she finally made her way back to the property. How, how far away? Miles. They travel. Well, no, I mean, you're trying to track them. You've got telemetry. I mean, yeah. And they, that'll track, you know. What's oh, the, oh yeah. the rain? Well, we had... <laughs> We're on our second set of equipment because the original equipment that we used at Horse Hill many years ago um, wasn't functioning as well as it used to. So we're actually, uh, thanks to the goodness of a professor at UVM, which I'm not even sure who it is. It was another uh, guy that does some work with me. He was working with this guy, and he just dug it out of a box. He goes, hey, I got some radio telemetry. Let's put some uh, backpacks on some birds, uh, this guy. <laughs> Was, was studying birds up in Vermont, and so long story short, we ended up being able to use his telemetry equipment because he didn't even need it anyway. So it's much better, um, and the range on that, um, you know, maybe 100 meters, maybe a little bit better than that. I actually haven't used it myself personally. Um, Arian, the, the intern, yeah. Can you just tell the state for the people at home who you're tracking? Turtles. Thank you. <laughs> yes, we're, we're, we're tracking turtles, not people. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, yeah. we got a transmitter on Gage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're keeping up with his whereabouts. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yes, we have three turtles that, that we've been trying to uh, see. Um, sort of looking at their home range, the females wondering where they're breeding, but since they left for the summer, we're not sure. We had an idea of some places on the property itself, but. Um, but since they left, we're not really sure. And that was really the goal of it. Um, so I'll give you guys an update uh, next time Erin goes out within the next week or two. And, and like I said, I suspect she's back on the property in, in, in her hibernacular for the, for the winter time. We'll do, see. Do they travel in any kind of family pack? No. So once, they're, once they breed and they're born, they're off on their own? They're off on their own, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the male was, uh, we got a signal from him. He was southeast of the property at one point, probably hanging out in some vernal pools, and that's what they do in the springtime, especially after mating. They're going to the, all these vernal pools, which there's, I think there's over 15 on the property. Yeah. So <laughs> varying in their degree of productivity, so they're eating all the, the, the egg masses and, and, and what have you. So, um, But yes, we're, we're, we're still on the search. Um, <laughs> some, some basic quick results, um, we've identified during the breeding season over 75 different birds out on the property during the breeding season. 18 of those are species of conservation concern either listed in the New Hampshire Wildlife Action Plan, but I also use a uh, uh, regional conservation plan, so the bird conservation region for this area. They're also listed in there, so things like uh, prairie warbler, which there's quite a few of them. There's rufous sided towhees, which there's quite a few of those as well. Um, a lot of different types of warblers that are on this list. Some waterfowl as well. Um, one thing that really surprised me, Greater Woods, by the way, is a really amazing place, as the lady mentioned, <laughs> not just for trails, but for the wildlife. And I suspect it has an awful lot to do with the, the unfragmented block that goes into Amherst to the west. And I was really surprised at the amount of moose sign that we were seeing out there, and fresh moose sign. And not only the sign, but individuals themselves were noted on several different occasions by, there was it, five of us out there working at any given time. 
and I was really surprised at that bear. That didn't surprise me so much, but we were seeing quite a bit of fresh sign of bear and a bunch of other target species like mink and otter. The beaver are very active out there. You know that. They come and they go, but they're always out uh, at greater woods. Um, so during this whole process, 18 species of conservation concern in terms of uh, birds, but we also found three reptiles of conservation concern. Two of those are listed at the state level as being threatened and endangered. Um, so um, we had, I knew of one already from years ago when I did a study back in, what was that, 2005? I don't know, that's been a while now, the biodiversity plan. I knew about one out there, um, but then we confirmed uh, the, the presence of, a, of, of another reptile that's out there. So very interesting nonetheless. Um, you have a uh, snakes and turtles. Yeah. Um, and um, you have a lot of mountain laurel. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we, yes, we do. <laughs> Makes walking a, easy on trails. A ton isn't it? of mountain laurel. So <laughs> the trails, I'm not really familiar with the trails because we're off trail. We may use them to try to navigate our way into certain areas, but. You know, I can imagine mid to end June must be really pretty out oh, there. Yeah, every yeah. two years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially what is it, the, the, the southwestern section is just, is just full yes. of mountain laurel. So you have this really interesting mix of northern forest and southern forest kind of coming together. And that's what this whole part of New Hampshire is anyway, like the, the northern New Hampshire where, I mean, excuse me, northern New England where you get the convergence of these. So like this oak mountain laurel forest, that's more of like a southern affinity, like you move down into Mass and further, it's really common. You move a little bit further north, it really j drops out. But then you have the standard hemlock beech oak pine forest and hemlock forest. So the so the, the oak mountain laurel forest is, is pretty neat in and of itself. Um, it's considered as a S3 at the state level means that it's, it's doing good. S1 is very rare. S5 is like hemlock forest, you know, they're kind of everywhere. <laughs> um, but interesting nonetheless. Um, and I think I mentioned you have about 15 or so vernal pools distributed throughout the whole property and just the, the arrangement and the types of all the wetlands that are out there with the uplands just it, that doesn't surprise me why there's so much wildlife that's happening out there you know every time I went out there it was just uh, very prolific and um, and and especially like some of these uh, like the rufous sided towhees and the prairie warblers they like open areas um, and so I think that forest activity that happened I don't know maybe what 20 years ago or something like that maybe almost, almost 14 yeah, I was thinking it must have been like 15 or 20 years ago contributed to sort of this diversity out there that kind of broke up that more mature type of forest. But then also those wetlands really break it up. And you have, you know, your emergent marshes and your shrub swamps and then forested swamps as well. So it really makes a huge, huge array of habitats that are out there. Um, so I'm um, getting into the report. Uh, process and I'll have something to you guys uh, in January um, if not sooner um, and like I said we're gonna go out at least one more time to see if we can find that other female um, and um, hopefully she's back from vacation um, <laughs> one, of, one of the considerations uh, just like with Horse Hill is we need to get out there next spring to get these transmitters off and so one thing that you might want to consider as a commission is would you like to continue to collect a little bit more data on them since these females sort of took off and see what may happen next year because the hard work has already been done between the trapping. Getting out and doing the telemetry itself doesn't take much time and, and, and if you're interested in continuing that I would work with a student. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were funny. You're like, how can you not find the turtle? You know, it's a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I was a little speechless when Gage said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if that's something you're interested in doing, let me know. Um, otherwise, uh, come springtime when they start to emerge is the easiest time to try to find them when they're basking and, and to be able to pop those transmitters right off like we did um, at Horse Hill. So. chat amongst yourselves and figure out what you want to do and, so, uh, and I can give you a sense I, I don't know off the top of my head in terms of cost you know but it takes about 
including their drive time. It takes about half a day really to to kind of zone in on them. It kind of depends on where they are or what have you. But again, I'd be looking to get a grad student to help out with that. Probably even Arian again, who has been working on it. She's she's really into turtles. Also had uh, Laura Deming, who used to be with uh, New Hampshire Audubon, yeah. working on that. She she's no longer with them. Uh, she's been working with me for the past two years, sort of you know part time in a way. So she she and Arian spent the bulk of the time doing the the trapping and uh, telemetry work out there. So what do you need to know by? Just sometime this winter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not like right. an immediate thing we gotta know right now. No, it's something you guys definitely talk about and I can kind of come up with a, you know, a, a cost per day looking at, because um, it would just be their hourly rate plus covering their mileage and, and time getting there and, and, and whatnot. So I can give you a rough estimate of like a per day cost and, um, you know, how many times would be good to go out. And one of the things that I'm really interested in is, is really the month of June. Uh, May definitely, um, April they're starting to come out, but June is the nesting season. And to really see where uh, these females are going. The, the, the male, that guy really traveled a lot, but these females, they've really traveled a long way. And it was kind of interesting and we just could not find them even driving all around the whole property and just driving roads and looking at maps thinking because they're going to be in wetlands that's where they're going you know unless they're unless they're nesting and then they just go to that site and then they go elsewhere so they're visiting various wetlands and vernal pools and whatnot so although that male he was he was just hanging out underneath the leaves near a, um, a vernal pool at one point he was taking a nap I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah traveled a long distance so yeah no immediate need to to figure that out but something that um you guys want to talk about and as soon as you let me know then that way i can go ahead and line up somebody um probably even borrow this uvm uh, professor's equipment and uh, thank him promptly as well <laughs> what what do you think the top ceiling would be so if we did want to budget it in um like what's the most it would cost do you think more than five thousand dollars and I, it might even be stretching I didn't even really think about it too much to be honest with you um, no, yeah that's kind of stretching it right there I think I mean because again I'd be relying on a student to go out so that that really helps to keep costs down I, I would okay. be involved with the management of it and you know if it happened to be a, a different student taking them out there showing them around the property which is easy enough that'd be like a day out in the field with them but I can definitely prepare um, um, a sort of a budget for you so, so it gives you something tangible to look at right. go, okay sure yeah. or that would be good yeah absolutely thanks so you mentioned uh, birds and, and reptiles and, and uh, wildlife any uh, anything rare or interesting in the plant grass yeah tree. we didn't we didn't find anything rare um one good thing um not a whole lot of invasive species that are out there um that's which good. was surprising i mean there's definitely stuff especially around the edges of the wetlands that's where the birds like to perch and do their thing and spread the seeds um but um it's looking pretty good out there yeah but no rare plants you know it doesn't mean that there's not um rare plants are sometimes really hard to kind of come by but nothing that, that really stuck out yeah. yeah so so our most recent acquisitions to assemble greater woods is some properties we got on the south and southeast huh. um, it's kind of around what we call the donut hole do you, do you know if you covered all our parcels I believe so so there's greater road that yeah. cuts through and that looked like that must have been a new acquisition because we did see some signs for no hunting yeah no but target was, shooting yeah or yeah well we heard a lot of that going on somewhere yeah i don't know if it, i don't think it was on the property i think no. it was on private property yeah, but it's down right in across that Wilson area Hill. and, yeah. and yeah. over to the east of the yeah. property yeah yeah, yeah. I hear and some old spent shotgun shells oh okay <laughs> yeah spent shotgun shells and stuff and yeah i kind of felt like that must have been a new acquisition and i didn't remember it from the last time that no, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah. yeah so we did search that because there's a um, the big wetland system 
that's yeah. down in that area, kind of mud flats almost in a way, but there is a little bit of depth to the water and, yeah. and um, we were definitely finding turtles okay. down in there, yeah, yeah. So. Good. But really amazing piece of property, yeah. yeah. What species are the three you're tracking? Uh, they're Blanding's turtles, yeah, yep, yeah. And um, you know, met a couple people. Um, well, met lots of people working out there, but <laughs> this one guy that that has been watching them for for years and was telling us where he was having observations of them. Yeah, so that was helpful. So we put some traps in some of those areas and, and ended up finding some. Yeah, yeah. There was another target species that we didn't find <coughs> out there. The spotted um, doesn't mean it's not there, but. We did a really good trapping and search effort and really focused on the habitat that we felt like, it w well, what it, what it uses. So, because um, we did, you know, they, they are in Merrimack and other locations. So I assumed that we would have a good chance of finding them there. We didn't, but again, it doesn't mean they're not there, but they're just, they're a little trickier. <laughs> but they do respond well to trapping though. Um, so do water snakes, <laughs> and they're aggressive. <laughs> so um, you've got a lot of water snakes that are out there. You have painted turtles and snapping turtles that are using the vernal pools as well as the other turtles. So, um, you know, all of a sudden we're, 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 we're counting egg masses and you see something moving in the water and it's a shell of a snapping turtle. And then as we're getting out, there's a huge water snake curled up over there <laughs> in the sunshine. Yeah, it's just, it reminds me an awful lot of Horse Hill as well, you know, which isn't that far away anyway, but, um, yeah, yeah. Were, were you down at all by the school on the Old Blood Road going back up towards Chestnut Hill development? Were yeah. Down, were you down that direction? Yeah. That's where we found the male one time. It was, no. was See, way That's down. the biggest water snake I've ever seen. Yeah. It was, that, used to, that pond used to pond right there. Yeah. Oh my God, that thing was enormous. <laughs> 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 There's some big ones out there. Well, one got inside one of the little traps that we were trying to get the spotted turtles and it was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there that day. <laughs> and then there's a huge, yeah. <laughs> huge snapping turtle. So, you know, like where the school is and then there's the beaver meadow and then you got uh, beaver pond in another marsh just to the west of there. So you're near Conservation Drive at this point, yep, a little yeah. bit south. There, There is an absolutely huge um, snapping turtle in there. Uh, Arian was calling it Great White. <laughs> <laughs> and if you ever had the opportunity to try to get a snapping turtle out of a, uh, a, a, a net, a turtle net, it's a turtle trap, it's, a, it's not fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's stressful for both parties involved. <laughs> Because they're very angry, and I get it. I totally understand. <laughs> I think I would too. <laughs> Mike, you might have stepped on him when you called me the egg. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one I think could take your hand off, much less a finger. Wow. <laughs> you lose a foot. Up cap <laughs> size? <laughs> yeah. 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 How fast can they run? Yeah. <laughs> they can surprisingly move fast, especially. I remember one time, it was actually in Merrimack, it was a private landowner, I, and I pulled a female out, and she was very angry with me, and she started charging me. <laughs> They'd stand up like this, yep. and pounce her feet, and then she started to charge me, and I'm, and I'm running. <laughs> I'm, I'm running from a turtle, you know. This, <laughs> I'm thinking, they're, they're big, like so. I could walk and get away from it, but no, it, <laughs> she got my attention. <laughs> <laughs> So any any hidden antiques or other uh, or or other things? antiques yeah like right. vehicles or oh. or things like that kind of lost out in the middle of the woods um, that that we might not have stumbled across since you were off trail not not to my knowledge I'll let you know as I piece together more of the photos and I go through all the photos yeah, from okay. all the folks that were out there because. Uh, um, this guy, one guy, Stephen Lamond, he's done bird surveys, but he's a student of mine, and he's, st he's still working at Antioch, actually, now as he's graduated, but um, he, all of them were taking pictures anywhere of, of, of significant stuff and anything that was anthropogenic as well, so I haven't looked through all the photos, but they're 
probably is something like that out there. Yeah. I personally haven't seen anything yet. Okay. <laughs> Right. Yeah, because we've got the red brick trail because they used to make red bricks along that trail. Yeah. You know, and and uh, in another properties, we have the Willie's Trail because there's an old Willie's really? Jeep. Oh, really? There's an old Willie's Jeep out there in the middle of the trail. <laughs> well, the tr we found a bumper there last week. Yeah, we found a bumper out on Wasson oh, too. Yeah. Just a big old chrome bumper. Yeah. So, yeah, every now and then. So, and oh, there's, yeah. there's an abutting property with a couple of vehicles on it that I know about as well in the south. Yeah. South of... Um, Near near um, w Wilson Hill Road. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if there is something out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or anything? Can't wait to see the report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Thanks for your patience as we, we're sort of finalizing this thing. Um, and uh, like I said, should have something to you guys uh, in January. And I will send over, you know, a, a, a draft budget for you guys to discuss. And, you know, if you have questions, obviously let me know. And then just let me know how you'd like to proceed. And I can go ahead and get some money lined up for the field season. That way we're raring to go. Okay. Perfect. Great. Great. All right. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Nice to see everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry I couldn't make it last oh. time. Are we Sorry, canceling at the last oh. minute. I don't like to do that, but that was definitely needed. <laughs> Are we doing a vernal pool walk this winter or anything? Not a vernal pool, um, like a winter walk or... This uh, winter, we or tracking last yeah. year, we we did one last winter. I know. Are yeah, we doing we another one? Bobcat. Yeah, yeah. There by that vernal pool that we always do. Yeah, we had what, we had two, two or three outreach. There's two. There's two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. yeah winter yeah. mammal tracking, and then the vernal pool the, the vernal workshop. Pool. Okay. Yeah. Both of them were mm. pretty well attended. I yeah. Yeah. From, from what I recall, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I was, I was worried one. about the mammal tracking thing because I was out the day before, and I just wasn't seeing anything. I'm like, what's going on? And then. We just happened to see these fresh bobcat tracks that happened had happened the day before that, and it was it was perfect too. Yeah, we were all what you know, thirty yards from the trailhead. Yeah, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't get very far. We were out there for you know, yeah, three no, hours. no, <laughs> uh. we were we were right there. So it was a fun day. It wasn't yeah, too cold either. Yeah, I remember, yeah. we had so. twenty five. Yeah. People, yeah. 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 yeah, it certainly is. Yeah. If we yeah, that's a good point though. If we want to do another vernal pool party, mm -hmm. what, what do you need for a time, like? Um, we would be looking, again, I think we did that, that was in May. It's always kind of tricky sometimes. Right. It's, it's so variable, but, you know, end of May, I mean, uh, end of April, beginning of May, even mid-May is fine, too. The, the wood frogs, they just, they hatch so fast. It only takes them, like, about 28 days, and even getting into three weeks, the egg masses are already starting to, like, disintegrate, but you can still tell. But the spotted salamanders, they last for, like, two months, and they're always just solid, so... Yeah, end of April, beginning of May. When do we when do we need to get in, on your schedule? As soon as, <laughs> as soon as possible. Yes, because since it's such a short window, yep. a lot of people are asking me to do those hikes. Okay. But yeah, I'd I'd love to do another hike for you guys out there. Maybe we'll see another big water snake. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so just let me know as soon as sure. possible, but I'll, I'll already have you guys penciled in for that. All right, perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye -bye. Nice Thank to you. see you, everyone. All right. All right. Uh, moving on. No statutory advisory business. No new business. Uh, into old business. Uh, the first item on old business is the conservation ranger discussion I wasn't here for the last discussion however I did look at the notes and uh, watch the video so yeah. Eric do you have some input about your meeting with you know with the Londonary crew uh, I wouldn't say I learned much that was outside of the emails uh, that were sent but um, I think just what I learned was just hearing uh, his day-to-day -day operation. Uh, I was a lot more confident that, you know, he would actually have stuff to do if he was in Merrimack. Uh, it seems like in Merrimack he would be, the ranger would be busier than in Londonderry. And yet in Londonderry he seems to have work to do uh, every day. So Did he talk about his 
his range, like where he goes? I mean, does he stay pretty much just in Musquash, or is he? He says he, he mainly stays in the one uh, park. In the Musquash one. reservation, yeah. 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 Okay. Next, I mean, obviously we got, you know, we got a lot of parcel, we got a lot of land, but it's well, spread out. I mean, one thing obviously for us as a commission and our budget, um, it's like something probably we i'm just you know assuming things here uh, you know we like maybe we'd be willing to pay for for a year or two but we it's not something we'd want on our our budget for no you know, on, on and on right right that didn't london dairy they paid the first year and then the town yeah they pay, i think they paid it fully the first year second year was split and then third year went to the town that's exactly yeah it was 100 percent of the first year and the equipment um the conservation picked up because they had to buy him an atv and a truck um but then the second year they paid 50 percent of it and the third year it was it became part of the police department budget yeah i mean am i wrong to, like if we were considering that it would be something like that we definitely would not want to have that as a budget item perpetuity no i don't think we could support it yeah but we probably could for <laughs> an arrangement like that i think would would work if did we could work with the town it was salary mentioned i think it was seventy five thousand. well seventy five thousand didn't that include the um the atv though i remember seventy five thousand and an the, atv in the salary is uh thirty dollars an hour for 20 hours a week 24 hours a week and as a retired, they retired, they have a retired officer is what I mm -hmm. um, read, and he, he be, because of uh, pension requirements, retirement system requirements, he can only work like 1,300 and some odd hours a year. So we would, you'd have to budget the time allotment into, you know, into that type of situation. But, you know, um, when I originally brought it up, I've noticed that there's been several items of concern regarding enforcement and you know um and some i've heard some dissatisfaction um with response and although i don't want to blame the police because i believe that you know they have a lot of areas to cover and priorities it's sort of triage in many ways in what they have to do and can do and and can they justifiably and i think i've said this here before is be out in the woods um, doing something when they may have, may have to respond to an accident, a domestic violence related call or something and so forth. So, I, I mean, I, I thought that this was a good, and I do think it's a good idea, a good approach to some of our issues. Much like we're hearing from Coleman Path and BB Lane, I think an individual like this conservation officer would be uh, perfect for this situation, you know, um, to you know, get out the word, get out the message, and even if you have to, enforcement, whether it's either warnings and documentation or, or actually um, fining people, you know, and that wouldn't, we wouldn't be looking to do that primarily, I think, but it'd be more like education, but then you, you may have those repeat offenders. And, and also the target shooting I've heard come up over the year, um, as well as uh, other different things, OHRV, law enforcement, and so forth. So. There's a number of issues. I think the individual, if we had somebody, would be, um, you know, would be busy. We have a lot of properties. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I guess it's up to this body if they feel it's worth the money. Seven, I'm interested, 75000 wouldn't be the salary, though, and this would be a part-time individual. So if my math is right, if it's, you said it was $30 an hour? Yeah. 20 hours a week, so yeah. it would be $600 a week times 52 weeks would be 31 yeah. Two hundred, yeah. and they being part time, they wouldn't. I could imagine they wouldn't have uh, benefits. So, um, right. so I think it's it, and I they fall under the authority of the chief of police because there's certain qualifications they need to have. Right, you know, need to be qualified with a firearm. They need to be qualified in certain things. Um, what I liked too was the um, individual in London Dairy went and trained with the Fish and Game for a period of time. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be huge. Um, so the PD has one or two OHRVs um, with a trailer and a pickup truck. And so that could be um, used possibly, uh, you know, because if it's, the, they're not patrolling in it. So I don't see why, why it couldn't be used. Um, you know, and I think that really- Because we're often told that that 
they're not using the ATV because they don't have the grant money, so it just sits there. Say that again. We're often told that they're not using the ATV because they don't have that they didn't get the f grant funded, so yeah. it's just sitting there waiting for that grant funding to be used. So, so I mean, there's a, a couple different approaches. I think, uh, you know, I, I'm in support of it, and I would voice my support to the council um, if that's what this uh, commission wants to do. Um, and then it's just talking different numbers, and I would say talk to Paul McCalley and the finance department and so forth, and and hammer out responsibilities and who this individual I would imagine unless it's an emergency the, this individual to me would have would answer to this commission you know for assignments and so forth and in direction you know and I like the fact that that individual shows up at a, a meeting once a month and, and updates everybody on what's going on as well so that's one man's opinion would it be kind of similar to how at the middle school there's a police officer that works for the police department but kind of answers to the middle school similar to that yeah yep. it would be it like would be just officer. that um, I mean there was a grant involved over the right. years um, but you know uh, the school resource officer I mean ultimately is a police or mm -hmm. police officer and if and when needed in a case of an emergency they may draw upon that individual right. but that would be the worst case scenario right. you know so I mean also might be something where as the conservation commission would be involved in the interview process to for the candidate uh, i mike i agree a hundred percent i think that we should have a couple I mean, of representatives yeah. in the interview process i and i would there's the, the job is not for everybody you want somebody who's outdoors minded uh you know and so forth and and has a good understanding of how we would we would want law enforcement approach to be and you know so you get an idea of that within our within the property so I agree with you yeah absolutely I think sort of the next step would be to have a meeting with Eileen Chief Roy and Paul yeah. and discuss further I think one of the things they're going to be asking is, and I, and I like the um, gradual takeover of it, and I think that's more palatable. That would be more palatable to the council, is you know the first year salary, fifty percent the second year and third year maybe, maybe you know we the town takes on that individual salary from there, um, and so it, it, I guess we need to be in consensus as to do we want to put out that lay out that cash for the individual for the first year so yeah we just have to be we have to be careful because our our funds are not getting um, replenished. replenished in the same manner that they were before because they're only replenished from from uh, the mall current yeah. use Type right, and we're, we're so running we're running out of that property right right and that and Tim that's why I bring it up yeah right. <coughs> I think we you know uh, are we committed to do this or not um, and before we I think so we need to decide if we're committed or not yeah. so roughly it'd be like a hundred thousand dollar I think half that right mm. how much was doing, it here doing the one the one full half oh, second. okay sorry I thought it was 75 yeah you're looking at half yeah that. okay yeah how much is an ATV though they have one. It does. We have one. They have one, um, and I, I, you can. From what they're five, expensive. ten thousand. Yeah, you, they're 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 a new one. You're gonna be ten k. Yeah. Okay. It, is it absolutely? It's, it's yeah. yeah th that's another thing. If you're it, looking on a mountain bike as well, because yeah. far more of the property is accessible on bike yeah. than yeah. it is on an yes. ATV. Yes. And do we really want them driving around all over the place? Right. And and do, do they need an ATV just because M Musquash has one? I don't know. Right. I don't think they absolutely need one. Well, I would say to you that I I, I like the idea of you know and you did have somebody um, that would ride around on a mountain bike. That'd be great, but you know our pool of candidates <laughs> will they be physically fit to mm. do that? I mean, granted, right. you want to be fit, but yeah, that's a whole nother level. <laughs> they that's will be after two months level. on the job. So, <laughs> you know, you're just talking yourself into this. You know that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I have a job, council. <laughs> <laughs> might be a, might be a conflict there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I mean that would be 
I think you you would find some there would be a number of folks that would be interested. You know, so um, who knows? Maybe even a retired fish and game officer or somebody as well. Right. I would love to have somebody who's very familiar with our property in our town, though, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that I, yes, I agree with you, but I don't think that would take long. Hmm. You know, if, if someone if someone's going well, to take familiar, that position, mean? I mean, it would be it would be a couple weeks, and they they're going to have a good understanding where they are. Yeah. Yeah. And particularly particularly someone who's got some kind of law enforcement background that's you know willing to recognize. You know clues and what they're doing and understanding sense of direction that type of thing that's gonna that's gonna be pretty easy to overcome yeah and so listen to jeff and all of his you know interns that he had working for them the both horse hill and, and greater woods that they've been to it seems like they're like addictive to them they're like it's beautiful property i love <laughs> this property I, I mean i don't know many how many times he said that it's gonna be a dream job for somebody yeah, yeah. So like somebody person. somebody's gonna have a great job yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Gonna retire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're already doing it. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm already doing it, just not <laughs> getting yeah, paid. You are. <laughs> well, you know, the, the key is to have that person who's on the job already that has the certification. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, or can get re easily recertified Certified. because, you know, even if you said, all right, well, somebody will bring somebody in who's never done the job, you gotta remember that they gotta go to the part time academy, and that's a minimum of 200 hours there. Um, and you know, and then it's all the other training and certifications that they may not have. So do we have to pay for that? Mm -hmm. yeah. that that's probably why the budget was 75 okay. for the first year. Okay. We bought him a truck too. So there's a truck in addition yeah. to the ATV. That's ah. Yeah. Yeah. I almost think the. I think what um, what Pete had sent out several weeks ago actually had a number in it. I think it had an estimated cost. Down. It was seventy. Every dollar is broken. It down. was. Yeah. 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 And you know, every year the the police department takes one of their crews, it takes three or four, three or at least three of their cars, um, and turns them over. Um, so this might be a, that might be a way to have a vehicle for the conservation officer. You know, um, they take it out of service. They when it hits about one hundred twenty-five thousand. But this individual, he's not going to be doing the same thing that a patrol officer would be doing. It's only 20 hours a week, and it's probably mm -hmm. riding from the PD to various location and parking. Yeah. So you might be able to get away with the use of that type of vehicle. So, hmm. so do you think it's prudent to next step, uh, set up a meeting with Chief of Police, Eileen and Paul? And, and discuss further because it sounds like by consensus everybody is in favor of going further with this I, I think at least I am in favor of kind of how this is laid out whether we can get the town to agree to that yeah I think is gonna be whether it's conditional on that yeah mm -hmm. right so while, while I think the idea is good uh, you know it's still yeah, I, I agree. I think that's kind of the next step. Next step's going there. Okay. Find out if we can actually strike this type of deal. But even then, that's uh, again, you know, we're not we're running out of property. So, this is this is money that's going out, and we I think we probably have to check with Paul too. Is you know, can we hire somebody like that? Because I mean, granted, we're hiring people like Jeff, and we're paying for a project, but this is going to be someone's salary. But I I think they they work for the police department. They would, mm -hmm. yeah, but not if we're paying them. Well, they'd work for the town. Right. They'd have <laughs> sort of a dual reporting to police and to commission. I think that's how the setup with Londonderry works. We just need to be careful and make sure that we're, our funds are set up that we can pay someone's salary. You know, because it was this volunteer, and we were charged with the stewardship of the property, whether this is considered a stewardship under the, the RSA. Yeah, we just yeah. have to make sure that we. Yeah, yeah they, 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 and I and I see this as it would be going through the town. We would it would almost be like a grant, like the commission is grant funding this position yep. for the town for a year and a half. Um, you know, which is how a lot and, of and we know we can do that. Yeah. So. So and again, again, I, I'm one of seven counselors, so. Um, you know, but uh, you know, sitting down with Paul and Eileen and the chief, and and a lot of what I've seen so far from Londonderry, a lot of that we can use. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. 
So. You seem to be holding your tongue. No, no, I'm just doing a little little research in the background. That's all. You know, pre previously we did do sort of a grant thing to pay some overtime mm -hmm. for patrols. Um, at that time, I remember, and I think Tim was the majority of the research, researching with the RSA to see if it was a, a good function of mm -hmm. the, the, you know, Conservation Commission RSA, yep. and it was. So I think you know we I, I think we funded a grant though, right? We fund. We didn't. We did not write pay. I think we were funding a, a grant. No. It was, was a written grant for conservation. No, they had. Or something like that. Yeah. They had a grant, and we wanted additional, so we fund fifty three, paid. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was, <laughs> yeah, there was, um, it was basically an invoice for hours, yep. and and it was paid on a periodic basis. Yeah, okay. yeah. Just, as long as we can do it, that's yeah. Okay. I mean, if we're interested in moving forward, then it, I'm I'm hearing that it's out, you know, that it is. I can tomorrow uh, contact the town manager and and see how she wants to proceed on this, and we'll express our interest, and maybe we can kind of start hammering out some more details and. and Kind of gathering what more costs could be and, and other possible savings, as opposed to buying a whole new vehicle and hmm. and the possibility of using the PDs or HRV and stuff. So that could be significant cost savings right there. So. Sure. Yeah. This is probably my opportunity to mention I probably a wet blanket in this room on this topic. Um, there seems to be a lot of support for the idea, and on principle, I don't. I don't hate the idea. I'm just, my big question surrounds need. You know, to me, this seems very much like we heard about this great idea that's, that Londonderry came up with, and we should do that too. And then since then, we've been having discussion after discussion about, hey, we should do this too, and, and let's spend some of our funds intended to purchase properties and protect them in perpetuity on police salary and trucks and ATVs. So I think if we had uh, more severe issues like they were seeing that precipitated them getting that role, like it was a specific problem, the target shooting is what started that conversation in London. Um, <clears throat> that opened up that can of worms and they got a lot of support out of that specific need. And then they approved the role from there. Um, you know, I have concerns with most of the supporting information we've seen so far has come from police officers who benefit from a larger force and a larger budget in general. But I haven't heard feedback from like conservation-minded folks on the Londonderry Conservation Commission. I mean, I think, Eric, the person you talked to was the actual officer at? Uh, he, he was one of them. There were three other uh, women there. I don't remember their names. From Londonderry, though? Yeah. Okay. From the Conservation Commission. Yes. Did yeah. they give any opinions on how they think the program is going? They seem to like it. Um, it's still in its first year. Is that? Yeah. So they they aren't. Um, yeah. They don't have any final report on it, yeah. but uh, so far they they do really like it. And they were sitting at the table with the officer when you were talking yeah. about us. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> I'm just. Uh, it seems like a big change for the town and for the way the commission manages its properties. I mean, it's managed to handle it for how many ever decades it's been running so far. Um, I just think it, it requires a measured approach. So I, I love that we're getting all this very specific financial information from London area. I'm loving that I hear it's working for them. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it would work for us. There are over 200 cities and towns in New Hampshire, and this is the only other one that's handling its situation in this particular way. I just want to be careful that you know, it's not a keeping up with the Joneses, Joneses thing, you know, that it really is the best solution for our town. So, oh, sorry. No, Mike, and I can, I totally agree. And if this council looked at me and said, Pete, we appreciate the idea, but we're not interested, I, absolutely. And I, my suggestion is based on the fact that over the 
it hasn't even been a full year I've been part of this commission, but I've heard a number of ongoing complaints and some concerns as to why the police um, haven't been able to respond. Um, and so um, that's kind of brought forward my thought process on this sure. is, uh, you know, this could be an individual that could deal directly with it. And that's, I guess, we all have to think about and say, do we have enough of a problem that we want to go this route? So, yeah. And I think uh, some other other of my concerns have to do with the specific way Londonderry is approaching it. I, I think it's very limiting and a bit silly, frankly. Like the fact that the person works 10 to 2 weekdays. Yeah, that wouldn't fly. I mean, that's. <laughs> that wouldn't fly. That, really? the, people don't use the properties in general during those hours. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree. Uh, and whoever came home with the job yeah. is. I, I don't want to say you're going to work every weekend all weekend long because your candidate pool is going to definitely dwindle. Sure. Um, but I think that you have to use a targeted approach. When, the, when are these issues occurring? And that's when this individual, I mean, there has to be some flexibility in their schedule, and they have to understand that. And I personally don't want to see uh, ATV use grow on our properties, um, especially properties that don't currently have any, just for the sake of somebody patrolling between 10 and 2. <laughs> Forget um, 10 and 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I came up with a pros and cons list that's probably about 40 items long, so I'm not going to read them all here, but I can <laughs> send a copy to all the commissioners for their own thoughts. <laughs> and at least you'll know where I kind of stand on the matter. There are pros, too, so I definitely see the value. Um, I just don't know from my perspective, and I, again, I have not been on the commission that long either. Yeah. I don't know that the need is really there. And what happens if we put this forward and they don't they don't want to green light it, the town council or people aren't a fan, and then we have a bigger problem later when we want to do it, and we've already sort of, um, you know, lost our opportunity because you know, we didn't really make a good case the first time. Uh, you know, I, and I, before you make a case, you get all your, your facts and figures together and all your information. Sure. So, Looking at the growth in Merrimack, I just see the demands in the police department growing. You know, it's going to be tougher. No, I, on I them. mean, I, I can tell you before I retired that I mean, I, and I knew back then, um, and I think just before I retired was when you folks started the grant here. That I mean, that I thought was a step in the right direction because it allowed we didn't have to take somebody off the street to to address an issue at that time and I thought that was great um, you know and I think it's as Mike says the, the police department's only getting busier and for them to I hate to say it and I'm sure the chief would and they do it but their time is restricted in, in, in focusing on getting into the woods well I think too I mean just the last couple of weeks at Wildcat Falls after going in to talk about the, the circle. I mean, we found an unmarked tree stand. Of course, that was on state property. We found um, someone was target shooting at the New Hampshire DOT sign. Um, I know I've had people that go into Wildcat Falls that talk about drug deals. You know, they'll, they'll see what's obviously a drug deal happening you know, in the parking lot. So I've had that mentioned to me a couple of times. I mean, in, in other properties, there were two unattended deaths in one of the properties, well, and then two in another property. So not that a resource officer that's walking around would have stopped all of them, but if you know that there's somebody walking around that's a police officer and you don't know what hours, because obviously we wouldn't have them working 10 to two we'd stagger the hours so people wouldn't really know when they're going to be around. And they're not going to, I mean, they would obviously have a badge, but I don't think they're going to walk in ducked out in police officer uniform. You know, they're going to look like any other hiker. So mm -hmm. at, at least that's what I would. Yeah, no, 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 I would think they'd be in uniform. Obvious. They'd be in a police I mean, officer? They'd be a, some type of enforcement garb. I, I, you'd want somebody read, readily identifiable, but you know, but it's a, the analogy I would use is much like the school resource officer. They put those officers in the school not to sit down and create enforcement on the children. Um, they, what, what's happened is in the high school and the middle school is they've created relationships, mm -hmm. a lot of education, a lot of outreach, and to me, 
But I see that individual is doing that primarily, mm -hmm. Mm. is being around there, talking to folks. If, if, they're, if they're moving through an area and they see an individual's dog, um, you know, someone who's not using a, a doggy bag and everything, you know, maybe it's a little education there, um, yep. you know, or there's individuals that are doing certain things they shouldn't be, you know, it's more so education and talking to people and developing some relationships. So that's, that's how I see that position. Um, I, don't, I don't disagree with that, but I, I also wonder if we want to spend a hundred thousand dollars over two years to teach people how to pick up a dog weight. So good point. It's a matter of like how severe is the problem? Like, does this fit the solution for our particular client? I don't know the answer to that. I'm not. I really haven't said like I'm against this. I'm just. It seems like a big step to take for the problems I am aware. I mean, Ginny, you mentioned the drug deals in Wildcat. That's a great example. But then again, that's definitely within the purview of the regular Merrimack police folks that could handle patrolling the parking lot of Wildcat. They do it already. You know, it's the stuff that's sort of deep in the territory, deep in the properties that maybe we could use help with. But how many of those things are there, right? I mean, if we could come up with a list and say, yes, this justifies that kind of expenditure rather than buying acreage then I'll listen, you know. You know, one point that was, because I had called and spoke to the uh, chairperson of the London Dairy <laughs> Conservation Commission, and I think one message that certainly resonated from that discussion with her, and it was a pretty lengthy discussion, was they really, um, she was a, a strong advocate for the program, but they saw this person as almost an ambassador of the Conservation Commission because it was a person that was out in the field um, 25 hours a week you know, and you know would come to their meetings and provide data this person did a lot of their their surveys and audits like the Wasserman walk and that those types of functions he said it was really it was great to you know have someone out there representing the Conservation Commission during those hours and I might maybe didn't capture that well I know I kind of summarized my conversation with her in an email but that, that was one thing she continued to come back to yeah, it's something we have to think about and balance. I mean, obviously, it's a not a burden, but it's like a responsibility that we're not. Yeah, we're, you know that you know we're you don't want it to just you know be dumped on us as volunteers to try to right. enforce. We're, we're, looking, we're looking at it you know, a little bit. You know, Pete's got a very different look at it because you obviously your you know prof profession you're looking at it from a different point of view. But you know, we're looking at it from conservation point of view. I think it's worth the conversation with town manager and the chief to you know there might be we might be missing something huge that we didn't think of yeah. and it could be a, a go or no go situation i mean I, i'm michael i'm with you I, i'm i'm not interested in buying an of atv in a truck yeah you know yeah. a salary yeah. oh, okay you know, 30 grand okay uh, some gas okay maybe uh, you know huge expenditures no i'm i'm not on board with that yeah, i agree not yet yeah i agree with that but, and, uh, I think it's worth the conversation. Yeah, I do too. And you know, we're obviously proud of when we can add to our properties, and you know, and, and then we obviously need money for that, <laughs> and that's not yeah. really growing anymore. Yeah, that's part of the problem we have to work with, right? Is it's not being replenished, as Tim said. You know, at the at the rate it used to be, there's only so many properties left that we can get, and of course, with the population growing, those properties keep getting more and more expensive. Yeah. yeah. Well, are we in agreement to at least talk about it the next time, or? Oh. Kind of. I mean, we'll talk with. Uh, yeah, I think I think we should still yeah. stay the course and speak with the town. Yeah. To see what their interest is in this. Um, you know, I I see a big need currently. At Scalar, I would say that's our biggest need at this point. Yeah. You know, uh, cross out in the woods in Wildcat Falls, while concerning, it's the Jeep in the middle of Scalar in a, you know, stream yeah. that is the a constant dumping. Right, a big concern. Yeah. You know, because that's that. property that we now own, and just recently, and there's still, you know, anarchy out there in my opinion <laughs> you know keep in mind this is a, a this would be a part-time position and at well employee 
I mean, and it all would depend on if, if we chose to go in this direction and we found it wasn't fruitful or wasn't working and just what we aren't getting the bang for the buck, yeah. we could just not fund it the following year. So, and that, and that would be for the town as well if, if they yep. took over the program. And, you know, we're not committing to anything tonight. It's just for furthering the discussion. Yeah. And I didn't want to further the discussion if there was no interest in it. So that that's my opinion. All right, so I've hesitated on cost, and Cage caught me, called me out earlier. <laughs> um, I, what's been frustrating to me over the years is the lack of investment um, we as a town do in our conservation properties. We fund our sports programs immensely. We give um, large checks to the Merrimack Youth Association. Um, we provide opportunities to sports in the school systems and all that um, we fund we fund the town center stuff the eddie griffin park things the movies and all that stuff and we fund almost nothing except for four and a half thousand dollars in our town budget for the conservation properties and conservation commission yet we have you know at least quadrupled if not ten times the usage going on that we had you know 50 more than well 17 years ago when i first got involved in in conservation here in the town so uh, I I actually l think the idea in having the officer would be a good thing to do um, because of that increased usage in, in all things and like Pete mentioned it's an employee at will so if the will isn't there the employee can go away too uh, so but in my mind I think the path that gets us to the town recognizing that we have properties that need to be maintained and need to be looked over and in the town to take responsibility for the costs of doing that I, the faster we get to that point the better I would feel about it if in fact we did it right from day one from the town budget that would be my preferred stance so I had to agree because quite honestly I mean there there are large chunks of land that the police just really don't I mean if they need to get out there like they did with Horse Hill when, when the hikers were missing just last week, then they do it. But for the most part, no one is patrolling these large chunks of land. That's a so, good so, so, yeah. So, so I, but I don't take my comments about funding completely as a complete negative because I do recognize the fact that um, over the years, the town, through votes of the voters, when we were selectmen based and the voters had to vote on them, on all these items to the town council has approved for the way that we've developed the funds that we have and, the, and has approved of all the properties we've purchased. Mm -hmm. So I do recognize that the town um, endorses and, and, and is committed to conservation and conserving our properties. I just think we need to go one step further now. We, we did mention like, a, a, uh, calling it the right thing, but a warrant article for the town to vote on uh, but the funding for this uh, so, so as a possibility in, in our current form of town government the the only thing that the voters vote on for the town side is the budget related items and anything that that, in, that creates you no know, budgetary items the, the policy making is done by the town council uh, and in all those other things uh, unlike what, when we were a traditional more traditional form of town uh, town government so so we could put a special warrant article together. And in fact, I would suggest that if we as the town wanted to go forward or the council wanted to go forward with it, that they do use a special warrant article. That means it's a, spe it's a separate article on the t in, in the town voting day and everyone in the town gets, an, gets to express their opinion as opposed to deeply embedding this position into the budget and just having it there where if you don't like it, you have to shoot down the whole budget. If we have it as a separate line item that lays it all out, we let the public decide whether they want to participate at that level or not. If the answer comes back as no, it's no. But we all should remember that councils change over time, um, people's attitudes about things change over time, because in the, in the 90s, we were very much not conservation-minded here. So things change over time. It just means no today. It doesn't mean no in two or three years or five years or whatever else. So. Yeah, but once it's approved, is it approved? 
Yes, absolutely, if the voters approve it. So it's, it's one way for the town council to also allow the voters to weigh, to weigh in and, and express an opinion. So, but yes, once it's, it, once it's for that, it's approved for that purpose only. The reason why it's called a special warrant article is say it's $30,000. If the voters approve that, if in fact the town wanted to use that $30,000 to put a down payment on a dump truck, they couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. If it was embedded in the town budget, I, it's kind of an extreme example that I gave, but there are opportunities to adjust funds within the budget in order to accomplish certain things as long as it's, that item is also called out in the budget some other way. So, so, um, so yeah, so, so once it's approved, it has to be used for that purpose and that purpose only. If not, it goes into the general fund and it could be turned back to the taxpayers the following year. So, so I, and I that think requires two-thirds vote, though, doesn't it? No, no, it's a, that's a majority <coughs> vote. Okay. It's, just a, it's a traditional budget item. So I mean, we could do it the way we're proposed here as a special warrant article, or we could go for the whole thing. Uh, it, it's going to require an education. I don't think it's something that we could put together and do for the next budget cycle because we haven't had enough time yet. So right. voting is in April, so we wouldn't be able to get it on the April ballot. Well, we, we could technically, yeah. It's all it takes is a petition by, yeah. like, I don't know, what is it, 20 or 30 registered voters to put it on there. You if you want to do that. You stand up at the delivery reception and read it right off the, right. Read it right off the put it in. I so mean, you'd want to, me, I think you'd want to start now. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, you'd want to present it to the council. You'd want to start educating, um, you know. And, 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 you know, get on Merrimack TV and on everything else that you got to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and you know, it, it's like, a, a, like Mike feels is, um, I don't need somebody in uniform patrol in these areas right now. There, that may be a, a majority opinion. It may not. A lot of people might say, you know, I wouldn't mind having an individual out there, um, especially in these, in these areas that have had some problems. Uh, you know, um, sitting here thinking um, as I, um, if you all saw the smoke coming from my ears, uh, <laughs> the, uh, I was just thinking that part of one of the reasons that you, we might want to do to approach the town manager and the finance director and everybody and, and, and is to create a list of the issues that we've known over the past few years, the, the active ones and the ones in the past, um, st to say this is why we're looking in this direction. This is why we're researching this. And maybe each of us might send Matt an email to put together a document saying over the past so many years these are the issues that have arisen they would have been helped in having a, an enforcement type situation you know so it, to each of our collective memories and we send it to you Matt sorry to put it on you or something you want to have somebody cobble or you want to cobble a, a letter together um, to further back up uh, further back up, you know, our, our reasoning for this. It's not just kind of a knee-jerk reaction on one issue. Yeah, yeah. you know, th so, sorry, Mike, but uh, the Mike was saying that Londoner is the only town, but uh, I, th I think Londoner is the only town in the, s in the south of the state that has somebody named a conservation ranger or wh wh however they have it labeled. But all over the state, there are towns that have a member of the uh, police force that is part time, and like e even let's let's say Milford and Exeter, they have paid conservation commission positions, and part of that person's you know job role is uh, patrol and enforcement. So these are towns that are right near us, and it's not their full time thing, but there's paid positions at the conservation level. That are for, you know, that have a line item in their job description that says enforcement or or, or uh, patrol. Are they, are they police? No, they they're have just. Enforcement under there? No, they're just members of you know the commission that actually have a you know. They take a paycheck from the town to do enforcement, education, patrol. What does that enforcement look like if they have no actual power to enforce anything? I think a lot of towns are different and set up different ways. And sometimes, you know, if they know they're going out to look at something, the conservation commissioner that has that role goes out with a police officer if they're going to, you know, enforce a boundary or, you know, leave a pile that got dumped. Depending on the situation. Depending on the situation. So it, it, it is happening 
all over. A lot of towns handle it different. And, you know, uh, I, you know, I learned a lot of it going to the NHACC meetings and just sitting with the commissioners. And they're like, well, we have somebody on that's on town, you know, that's part of town. And it's like, wow. You know, we're, we're just set up like the traditional RSA says, volunteers, but a lot of towns have taken it to a different level. And it's usually because of issues. And I think a list of issues would definitely show that and it's yeah, part of the education process to say this is why and all these reasons are why we, we think this is a good idea so. I mean, <clears throat> just just take Scolari it's it's stuck in my head I can't get it out of my head but you know we met with the police and said we need something to happen here you know so they're like oh we'll put up a game camera and nothing came of that nothing you know, there was still stuff dumped, people going in, ripping up rocks. Do they have a name? Do, nothing. Nothing. We need the next step. I think it's also important to just note that even though this was inspired by the Londonderry position, it doesn't have to exactly be like it or even remotely be like it. Because, you know, it doesn't have to be a police employee it doesn't have to be $30 an hour. It doesn't, obviously doesn't have to have a truck or ATV. Yeah. So even though we are inspired by, the, by Londonderry in talking about this, we can really do a lot, diff, a lot of different things with the actual position. Well, it won't hurt to communicate more with Conversations the- Conversations worth having. Fact find, yeah. Okay. The manager and police. So Pete, you're okay with setting up time or? Yeah, uh, I'll reach out tomorrow to the town manager and uh, see if she can put something together for uh, the finance administrator and the uh, and the chief. And you know, um, I believe that I know I'll email them what information I've gotten from Londonderry, and um, you know, and they can start there and see what they think as well. And I'll also express uh, in, in you know how we'll. You know, I think we can also express our concerns with funding issues too, and where that money would come from. Mm -hmm. So, and I know in this upcoming budget, there are personnel. I think there's going to be some personnel requests from the various departments too. So, then it becomes a, a matter of triage on who can get what and where and who needs it. So, but I, 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 at the very worst. What we've done is started a conversation. So if it doesn't happen this budget year, it could happen the following budget year. So, or potentially not at all. Right, exactly. So yeah, you know, and I'm not trying out. to force anything here. <laughs> to me, it was an idea. Bring it forward, discuss it. So, yeah. however the commission wishes to go. So. Discussions are held. Yeah, and I'm glad we can have an exchange because that's what we should be all about, right? Yeah. Great. Okay, the next item on old business kicked off the meeting. <laughs> Coming back around to hunting boundaries at Greater Woods. I guess the best question is do we have any more? I, yeah. I um, listened to the folks that came in, I listened to Teresa tonight. And I do think that they have concerns. And I'm not personally against extending out uh, a larger boundary to give these people some buffer. Um, I'm not sure exactly, you know, I don't feel like we need to close off all conservation land to hunting, but, um, you know, I'm sympathetic to the folks and what they've said and, and some of the stories. So, um, and their experiences. So I, I'm all right within pushing out those boundaries. And I would, you know, that basically that's the cul-de-sac beaver pond area, especially this, the uh, coast line that's along behind the houses. That's primary concern, I would think. I don't, I don't think we're gonna be able to extend it out into the water. It would be along the pathway. You know, yeah, between, between, between point A to point B, there's no, no hunting, but the minute they get down into the water, yeah, I mean, what can you do? Yeah. 
I mean, they're beyond they're beyond the boundary by that point, anyways. So it's going to be difficult because we the water is owned by, but not not you know no, no one owns the water. That's the we so we can't really enforce it. Yeah. But we, we can try. Well, which I, if there's water that's within a hundred feet yep. of a home, then we yes then then yep. the police can, can enforce, enforce it. it. Yep. We we can't enforce anything, but. I think, uh, like like the conservation ranger, like you know, a neighbor going out into the woods, it's an educational thing. If we, you know, like like Paul went out there personally with these stakes and said, "Here's the boundary," we could do something similar, saying, you know, for public safety, you know, this may not be a hundred feet, you know, you're not going to find it in your New Hampshire hunting book, but here, this is a safety, you know, net that we're creating I artificially or invisibly, and you know, please keep your hunting outside. You know, I, I really think the issue and the discharge of firearms close close to the neighborhood is people in the water duck hunting. The duck yeah. hunting is the work. Yeah, early in the morning in the yeah, in it's the fall. A, it's yeah. nobody with a right. yeah. shotgun hunting deer on the trail. It's it's duck hunting from blinds that are, you know, 200 feet from homes. You know, and a shotgun is loud, very loud. Does anyone know when duck hunting at season ends? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> For a long time, but and there's multiple... <laughs> October is probably the worst time. I'd say November. It's all of November well, anyway. Well, yeah, but I mean, the, where, we, where you hear the shotguns, you know, where the ponds and stuff. Yeah, just because it's opening week. They, they all go. But I'm sure there's people out there yeah. tomorrow morning, you know. But I think they I would. Suppose, do we start with Christian Game to find out, how, you know, how do we enforce buffers that are beyond the, the state limit? I mean, limit. when I was like looking at the little state things online, they're just hard to say. It keeps saying to hunters, uh, I don't know if it's not state property, check with your town. Yeah. Check with your town. Yeah. It, 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 what, what you're talking about, Gage, looking to them for enforcement ideas, yeah. we're not going to get anywhere with that. No. They're not going to help us enforce what we're looking to do. I hate to say it, but we've got to do something, like Pete said, kind of on our own. If we're going to do something, we have to do it on our own. It may not be legally binding if somebody is shooting inside that. So we just treat this like this is our property and we're saying you can't it's, hunt it. It's more education. And it's more... Let the, let the police know that we're going to institute our own boundary. And it, it would it would have to be signed, though. Yeah, yeah it would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, post it. And I think we use the red and white stakes. They've already been used. We just push it out. Either that or you create signs saying no hunting boundary, you know, and then maybe at the entrance to the path, we have some type of sign um, posted explaining the new rule and the buffer area so that folks going in legitimately want to hunt. I, and I truly believe a lot of the hunters will, just, will respect that request. They'll understand, yeah. I agree. And I don't know why, uh, you know, kind of to tag along to your idea, as the property owner, why couldn't we go just put no hunting signs on that portion of that property? Well, they can, yeah, but that doesn't cover all the houses. And the it would cover wherever we decide to put them. If yeah, I, I own 100 you acres and I want... Be, you'd have to be on both sides of the trail, trying to, with, it, with, mm -hmm. the, with the property skinnies out on the back side of the pond in that neighborhood, you know, that kind of, it's kind of a U-shape yes. right there. So from where Red Maple starts off of Gateway mm -hmm. on one end, yep. and then after the observation deck, on the off the cul-de-sac mm -hmm. going towards the beginning of drilled rock somewhere in that area that's i think where we're looking to create a bubble yeah and that, and that trail behind the houses that goes to gateway yeah that's, yeah, that's yeah. inside of that right yes yeah. now the map uh, eric showed us yeah you see the lots and they go out into that wetlands area and they actually their lots are in the water it, it, technically, somebody correct me, is that their property? That sliver of those 
This area right yes. here? Yeah. Is that their this property? is private yeah. property. Yeah, they, yeah. they own the water. So This is mostly uh, the people on Tobridge Drive. Yeah, I mean, I mean they, you know. One person on Trowbridge Drive hmm. owns that almost the whole thing until you get to the observation deck mm -hmm. and Paul's property. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So they could post their own property the there and say. And there's a cliff right before that property on Trowbridge. Mm -hmm. There's like a straight down cliff yeah. right there where the Bruins Rock is. If everybody, if anybody's been out there, <laughs> Someone painted over somebody there. painted the Bruins logo on a rock. <laughs> need some ink. Hmm? You need ink. I need. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I just made this in GIS earlier today, so I, I can send out a copy um, tonight. But yeah, it's just the orange line is the current legal buffer, 300 feet within a house. Oh, um, cool. And so you got Beaver Pond right here. We could just sort of bump out the buffer to Beaver Pond and maybe west of this trail here, and that would cover uh, BB Lane and um, Coleman Path as well as Towbridge. But um, I don't know. I'll, I'll send out the map uh, tonight. Be aware going down this road. You'll be setting a precedent, and the other neighbors on the other properties are going to come. Because we had, so back, the town bought Horse Hill in 2002. We had a committee from 2003 to 2004, and then that was the, um, then there was another committee, and, and, and eventually it became a committee under the commission. But for a while, when Horse Hill was first acquired, there was a tremendous amount of target shooting and, and hunting and everything else going on that property, and now there is, pretty much no target shooting going on on that property and the hunting is you know uh, has dropped considerably um, I won't say that there's no hunting going that there's no no hunting going on out there but um, oh, but, but I yeah but I yeah <laughs> so <in> windows. <laughs> yeah so I would expect that the folks on Queens Way and Palmary Drive and around Horse Hill are gonna say hey we want an extended buffer as well you know so um, the, the you know the Right now, Wildcat Falls says there's no hunting on the property per our, per our uh, town ordinance, so it probably doesn't happen there. But uh, you know, sh if you extend the buffers, they're going to want to extend buffers into state land, if at all possible, or whatever. You just want to say, expect this not to be the only place. So, and just the conversation we had at Wildcat when the parking lot first went in, mm -hmm. there was a discussion about putting plantings and such in. And then we heard about it from people that abutted trails. Yep. I want a fence. I want plantings. It was, you know, things we, no, no one had ever complained yet. And then also we're getting to put yep. things like out of left field. So that's all. Just want you to be aware of it. I'm, I'm not saying it's the right or the wrong thing, but it, it's, it's going to happen. So. Yeah. And, and I mean, we've had, I, I've been out in the woods and I've had, I had a hunter approach me and say, he heard me talking to somebody else and realized I was a member of the Conservation Commission. And the hunter asked me, hey, can we get a ban on mountain bikes in the mornings? Because the mountain bikes disrupt our hunting. And I said, you're welcome to come to a Conservation Commission meeting and bring that up. I'm sure it'll be really popular. <laughs> And he didn't come, you know, so, but at this point, how many meetings in a row have we had a member of the BB Lane neighborhood come and join us and have a very productive discussion about one small area that I think we could clear up with what I'd call education. Yep. Some people might take it as a, f a little more offensive and say, oh, you're encroaching on my hunting space and blah 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 but really I think what we're doing is just educating here's a question so New Hampshire migratory bird hunting seasons list three different zones northern zone inland and Connecticut River zone and coastal zone are we the inland and Connecticut River zone does it have a map no 
we assume we would have to do it? Yeah, because we're not we're northern, northern. <laughs> and we're not coastal. Not we so, so there is a map here, and we're in the inland zone. Okay. Okay. So, h duck hunting season Goes for anyone who's interested. Goes to the end of November. No, actually, there's th there's two. It goes from October 2nd through November 3rd, then it picks up again on November 20th through December 16th, is what I showed. And there were different times for Canadian geese. Canadian geese. Mountains. Canadian this geese year, there were are times. September 1st through September 25th, and then the same as ducks. Why would anybody hunt crows? Because crow season's really long. A lot of them? It's well, crow season is 815 to 1130, and then it picks up again 316 to 331. What's the purpose of hunting a crow? You don't eat crows. A lot of people eat crow, but that's yeah, yeah, I, know. I was <laughs> trying to resist that joke. I was really yeah, trying like to, like, I'm waiting for the punchline. You <laughs> I was really, I was really biting my tongue. But, um, some sport. people eat, eat crow, yeah, it's for sport too. I think that was originally dealt with when the hunting season came about. There's farmers and the protection of their crop. Yeah. All right. It wasn't in New Hampshire, but I have heard the story of a town where there would be literally 10,000 crows a year, and they had to sort of make it essentially a sport where you, um, you they would actually pay people to just hunt the crows. There's always alternatives. That might have been the easiest at the time, but there's always alternatives. So do we agree on the general territory where we want to restrict hunting? Do we want to do that? I might suggest if we're going to go down the route of exercising our property owner rights to basically post something that's beyond what the state sort of mandates is necessary, if we're going to do that anyway, why not... Why not not sign all of it and just close off that pond? Why not just say that pond is, it's been abused too much, people keep encroaching on landowners, it's too noisy. I mean, one un unintended consequence of closing off that end is that you're gonna force everybody on the other side facing back towards those homes. They're gonna get rained down with, with uh, pellet yeah. shot. Yeah. Um, it might even be a mm. negative on that neighborhood. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there's and, uh, always, like, things you don't... There's trail on first. three sides of that pond. I mean, I ran into a hunter on That's drilled yeah. rock just yeah. a couple of days ago. There's trails on four sides of that pond. Well, that entire yeah. pond is yeah. surrounded. Drilled rock right. is the side that nobody thinks there's a trail on, but it's really close. Yeah, I ran, there was a hunter there a couple of days ago. I mean, if you're going to do that anyway, you run the risk of the consequences legally, even if you're going to just stake off a small portion. So why not... It's sort of like the idea, like, why not put the whole thing in the budget at first? Shoot, shoot that way. Like, why not just put one sign at the kiosk that says, you know, Beaver Pond is now closed for hunting. You know, in and around it, you say whatever the buffer is. Or you can just say the pond is closed for hunting. You can go beyond the pond and hunt, but it's too close to the neighborhood. You know, however you word it, you make it short and sweet. And um, it has the same effect without all the signage. Uh, without confusion of where are you at any given moment. Um, solves the neighbor's problem. It's not a wacky idea, like I said, just make the whole property archery last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of simple. I didn't think that was wacky. Uh, was I, I, idea? No, I, I didn't think it was wacky. Oh, okay. I, 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 think, like I, I think the pawn I, uh, idea is a good idea. Yeah, you know, then you don't get into splitting hairs or people this claiming, oh, I didn't right. know because I was you know, six feet from that where I thought the post was. Where I was in the water, right? Solve the water problem too. Just say that, because you're gonna you're gonna open that can of worms anyway, posting it off beyond that yeah. hundred feet or whatever. Yeah, it is. See, it having to do that and then not being able to enforce it. <sighs> yeah, but at least we did something, right? Let's see how it works. Yeah. It's just a thought. Seems simpler in a way to me. Uh, I I <laughs> definitely see where Tim was coming from. When what he's saying. Yeah, it's going to happen. Um, regarding, you know, opening Pandora's box. Um, so, you know, to me, I, I, you know, I also, you know, want to do something to help these folks out. Um, 
I think two, these folks need to help themselves and post their own property. Um, and some folks haven't, as we heard, some folks haven't, some folks haven't. So, you, you know, um, you know I, you'd like to think that with each, you know, you, you, we're not just doing this because one person walked in and said this. This is because there's an ongoing history of this. Um, but I do respect the fact that we could be approached by other neighborhoods and we're going to have the same dilemma. Which we might anyway as the population grows. Yeah. Yeah. And overall violence in our society increases. You know, people are more sensitive to gunshots, I think. Maybe they were 30 years ago. I can hear gunshots three quarters of a mile from my house. So I can't imagine having it 300 feet behind my house. Yeah. That would be awful. Especially, you know, hunting season, you can legally hunt ducks a half an hour before sunset, I mean sunrise, to a half an hour after sunset. So, you know, that's pretty early in the morning. Not a nice way to wake up. <laughs> yeah, the duck usually it's like 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially on a Saturday and Sunday morning. It's like for a lot of people, it's the only time that they get to sleep until 7.30, 8 o'clock, and then <laughs> that'll wake you right up, especially if you're a duck. Do we want to approach this, much like Mike said, make it an educational thing at first, put something up at the, at the trailhead, asking the hunters not to use a certain area based upon the neighbor's request and see if that works? And then without formally Hosting. setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm open to a lot of different ideas. Everything sounds good I to mean, me. We can yeah, I mean, <laughs> all we can do is try something. Yeah. You know, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I don't know if everybody got my email this this afternoon I did open up a line of communication with um, the commissioner for Hillsborough for fish and game and he agreed to come January 6th did everybody see no. that yes no. okay I mean is is there should now that I've opened up a line of communication do we want to bounce anything off him or should we handle this on our own and then discuss this later I don't think just because he's coming to our January meeting we have to wait okay so if there's a good idea proposed yeah that's you know that we're able to act upon okay. I think we do it and depending on the results maybe we can chat about it okay. in January okay do we need to make a motion for this someone has to motion something else so. we don't do oh, there's no decision made anywhere all right. Um, I'm not exactly sure the wording for it, so I'll second Before whatever. Before you make the motion, can you clarify who's voting member and who's not? Or is it we have the full commission? We have the full, full commission, commission here, so All right. if you're Just a full member, sure. you're a voting right. member. That's, that's right. works for me. Yeah, let's get the wording. Yeah. Let's get the wording straight. We, we can work on the wording in discussion and then make a motion. Okay. So, I mean, th there were a couple things brought up. There was... Uh, uh, idea of let's post something in the kiosk which I don't think a lot of hunters are going in that way no but it's possible some are um, where are they heading in from that CD lane <clears throat> uh, yeah. some people are going in through the big gate on that private property that's what I would say where the majority yeah. are going in and they, they, they do go, I've seen one in the cul-de-sac. In the uh, cul-de-sac, yeah. yeah they, I think they, Paul's, they, Paul's moved most people out of there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it'd be, it'd be hard to do it with just a single sign at the kiosk, I think. Yeah. You'd have to put something on the other, bound, other side of the boundary. Mm. Yeah, I didn't think about other access points. Yeah. There's a lot of other access points. Well, they came up with a well-worded sign that essentially put the beaver pond off. You could put that wherever Merrimack's properties start, you know, the logical spot from where all those access points would enter. So 
whatever is the direct line that people are going to take their, their stroller to their trucks or whatnot. Maybe trail junction. You know, you put, yeah, wherever we're permitted to put a sign. But like, why stake it up? Like that's that's kind of my point. The differentiation of saying, just close the pump, because I think you're going to get a little bit of that issue with the raining down back towards the houses now, because you're forcing them to go that way and point in the other direction. Um, and it solves the water problem where they're in the water. And I know you told me before a lot of the hunting is actually done as Camino kayaks or Camino. Um, really reverberates over. But if they're putting it in from the cul-de-sac or from that other portage or from the blinds, they're shooting away from the neighborhood. It may be louder, but if we force the people to the other side of the pond, then they're shooting towards the neighborhood. Are we helping? Is it worthwhile just closing trail so that they can't get there? And then posting while we close the trail, um, no trail usage, no hunting during this time. Kind of like we, what we ended up doing with the beavers. We just closed the trail. Oh yeah, but that's yeah we're not gonna. That's because they were, the trails were, were flooded. To talk about having people just disregard our signs, if we start closing trails. Yeah, the signs are just going to get ripped down. If you tried to close Red Maple Trail that goes behind the neighborhood, oh, okay. nobody would. Yeah. Zero people would okay. take to that. <laughs> it seems like enforcement is going to be an issue regardless of what we do. Yeah. So We have no enforcement. Start and with sort of the easier things and work our way up. You know. So if... I hadn't thought of the issue that the hunters are coming in another way besides the cul-de-sac. So if, if you can duplicate that in the areas you know of, that still seems like pretty low key. You guys think that pegging it off like Paul had done is a better solution? Let's do that, but I think yeah, we should do something. I, I think it would take half dozen signs uh, on the trail the trail perimeters around the pond. What would this sign say? All right, what would this well, sign I, say? I started this conversation off saying I was all in favor of setting boundaries, but listening to the senior members of this commission who have been through things several times, I've kind of, in many ways, obviously changed my mind here. Um, and for that reason alone is based upon their experiences. Um, it, you know, I still think an educational type situation some signage you know you know asking these folks to respect the, the, the folks who live in this area um, and then just determine how we can we can do that at this point because you're right I mean you know no use in setting boundaries or signs that are unenforceable because somebody will test it so and when um, and I don't know how many people are out there but from what Paul was saying it sounds like he's talked to a lot of them and they were not necessarily receptive you know or the the other neighbor that came out sounds like they've tried to talk and they don't want to hear it right <laughs> who was the one that said if your dog is chasing a deer we'll shoot your dog oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I mean a, a lot of these people I think have been hunting Greater Woods before BB Lane existed. So you've got those people. And before Greater Woods was Greater Woods. Right, before before it was Greater Woods, it was their friend's property. And they were out there. The neighborhood wasn't there. So I'm sure some of them feel encroached upon. And maybe pushing the thing out, maybe it angers somebody, shutting off a pond. I think that will definitely Poke some bears, sure. so to speak. Yeah, no doubt. But I don't know. I feel there's got to be some way that we can educate. You know, I don't know if it's a sign that says, if you lived in this house, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
How <laughs> far away would you want somebody shooting? Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> it's you know, it's like but common sense doesn't work with common sense isn't common sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work with some How about folks. hunting restricted, you are entering a residential area or something like that. I think forty five minutes before sunrise we just start blasting baby shark all over the <laughs> pond. <laughs> and we just continue <laughs> until the the ducks fly away. Personally, I would dislike that more than a gunshot. <laughs> <laughs> but it would work. <laughs> so the, the two parcels that we're talking about that are around, the, around this beaver pond are both owned by the town, um, not the Conservation Commission. Ew. Which means That's that, that, which means that, that the town council I can say is, is the one that would have to set the policy. Um, ah. I think you looked at that. Yeah. Okay, it took me a minute to get all this to, to work. Technology is great, but when it's on a two-inch screen, yeah. it's hard to see at my age. So bo both of those, <laughs> both of them are? Both yeah. parcels. Both parcels. Yeah. It almost splits the pond, so. Well, that wouldn't preclude us still from asking for their kind, respectful. It is our, it's already been, you know, we've already been granted the management right to this. Exactly. So. Yeah, we right. Still I'm say just saying, if you want to, but something that sets policy on those properties, you're going to have yeah. to get the yeah. town council. Maybe just a warning: they're entering a residential area would probably be palatable. To I mean, we say we own all this property, but if this is if this conservation commission is all, it's, it's the town's property. Right. We're we're stewards. I think we're going to need to come up with some wording for a sign to share with town council and say, here's what we're looking for. Yeah, we're going to have to. And you're in favor of extending the, bo the boundary a little <coughs> further to begin with? Is that what you would envision approaching them with? Um, I, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of open to anything I just think we should do something for education whether it be a, a kindly worded sign that you know and we bring it to town council and say here's what we're thinking do you want to draw the lines here's the meeting minutes from you know <laughs> the sixth seventh eighth neighbor that's come in on this same property line I guess I asked the question because it seems to me the signs that would be used in a establishing a boundary situation may differ in wording than your educational one sign at the kiosk right. type sign. Yeah. So oh, like a private property sign, are you, are you saying? Like a, a private, I mean, the, the owners, the property owners, the private property sign is, you know, yeah. property no hunting. That's, that's they should all be doing that. You know, yeah, it's going to help. Ones that sure. we put up are going to be, you know, please <laughs> respect the please neighborhood. Just, you know, please respect, yeah. respect your neighbors. You know, yeah. You know, no hunting in this area. But but if they were interested, if, if we were interested in posting the area, out, we talked about going to where Drilled Rock starts, then that's necessarily probably going to say something a little different because it's going to mark a boundary, it's going to mention a boundary, something, versus, you know, your nice, please be a good neighbor kind of hunter sign, you know. That's all I'm getting at. I think you have to figure out which direction you're going to go to understand how you're going to word the sign. Yeah. I know I need to take a walk out there. It's a big tent. There's a lot of camels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sh should we schedule a meeting in the woods? Sure. So people can actually see what's going on? Invite the neighbors. Yeah. Let's do it for half an hour before sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> Best time. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, it, yeah, Saturday. it's insane. I'm not, and no, kidding aside. Let's do it early. Seriously. You know, I, I want to do it when there's light, but yeah. do it early in the morning when, you know, when there's potentially people out there. And you still have your whole day. S Saturday in the BB Lane call to sack. Saturday. Make a lot of noise, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the baby shark idea. Well, we could also we'll tell have, them that lilac we'll blossom that has posted soon. Yeah. Before what, seven, Wednesday. Seven days. Me meeting has to be posted 24 hours in advance. Yeah. All right. So this Saturday, what time? Gage wrote that there at sunrise. Yeah, I'm, I'm more 
eight o'clock or something. That, keep <laughs> All right, and as Gage will will also tell you, make sure you wear your blaze orange. To post it, you're going to have to have it on Sunday or Saturday the following, a week from Saturday. Isn't it? Twenty. It has to. If we're going, if you're going to meet as a body and then conduct a real meeting, you need to post an agenda 24 hours in advance. So we could do that tomorrow. Tomorrow, when the town posts, when the employees come in at 8, 8.30, you, have, you can't have the meeting before 8.30. No, we're, Wait, we're 20, talking about Saturday. 24 hours in advance? I'm sorry, that's today's Monday. I, for some reason, okay. I'm thinking like <laughs> it's Thursday because because oh, I because I used to attend meetings every Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we can do it this Saturday yeah. then. Okay, I had a senior moment, no. right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Saturday at eight. Does that work? Saturday for? eight o'clock. Perfect. And the BB the BB Lane Circle is down where the kiosk is. Yes. Okay. Is the yep. public invited? Yeah, uh, they're invited to all of our meetings. It's a, it's, a, it's a meeting of the commission. The public's always invited unless it qualifies for non-public. Um, I mean, I'll have to go take a walk myself. Can you make Sunday? Uh, what is it? Can you do Sunday? I could do Sunday, but the 23rd. I don't know if you guys want to do Sunday. Do we want to do Sunday? Because Pete yeah. can't do Saturday. I mean, I can, if need be, I can go out there Sunday and take a walk myself. That's my fun with us. I can get out there Fair before. Orange. The weekend, oh, yeah. but I'm not here this weekend. I never stay my feet, so. <laughs> it, it, we don't all have to be there. I think just the majority of the people that haven't seen it, it would just be beneficial for everybody to to see it and see what we're looking at. And Pete, I think you can find evidence of what we're talking about just oh, yeah. by going out yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'll take a good walk around out there. Probably do it Sunday then. So. All right, so I'm going to ask Cher. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. So is it is it Saturday? Yes, yeah, Saturday, 8 a.m. That's the 22nd. 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then 23rd, 8 a.m., meet at BB Lane Circle by kiosk. Post agenda. ASAP. Were you going to do the agenda, Jim? You, well, I was going to ask Sharon to do it. Do you want me okay. to do it or do you want to do it? No, that's great. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I can delete that calendar reminder. <laughs> <laughs> and Pete, if you're going out there and just <laughs> let, you know, let one of us that knows the property know when you're going out and if i can go out with you i'll gladly okay yeah and i yeah. told you before i i live in that circle so could you could all right you i'll, I'll shoot you guys an email i'm hoping to do it this weekend get out there sunday yeah so. yeah if you definitely yes yeah, send an email because i can't go saturday but i could go sunday yeah so yeah. just kind of you know help out and visualize and see everything if there's going to be more than three of you yeah exactly how many are there going to be? Because oh, I'll have right. to have her post two. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, there won't be, yeah there just, won't be just what you need. Three. Yeah. Hmm? Just No just, more than three. Just no more than three. One, two, three? On Sunday meeting or whenever you guys Whatever are Whatever else can. Right. You're right. Yeah. All right, so well, just I'll the three I'll walk 100 feet ahead. <laughs> 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 All right. But Saturday at 8. We have, Saturday a meeting eight of the eight we have a meeting of the Conservation Commission. May not have quorum, but we have a meeting, and the neighbors are going to be aware. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be there. <laughs> anyway. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there. Can someone okay. like to take minutes? I'll take minutes. Minutes could be very simple. You know, walked in the woods, we discussed the situation, and all left at 945. Okay. Gina took over. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I fell in my butt once on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Right. What? I left a boot behind in the mud. Gives <laughs> me my $100 Merrill sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me all right. Just write them let's uh, <laughs> let's get this one going. Other business. Um, discussion on communications or correspondence received. Um, so, one, we had Gina uh, invited the 
Commission, uh, the Conservation Officer, I the did. New Hampshire Conservation Officer, and he's coming to the January 6th, 6th meeting. January 6th meeting, yes. Okay. His name is Ray Green, and he is the Hillsborough County Fish and Game Commissioner. Commissioner? Yes. So he's not one of the officers. He's... No, I think he's, it says he's an op. I don't think he, I don't think he's on the commission, right? I think he's an officer. Well, he must be an officer. He's one of the one of the people listed. Well, is he? He's not the. He's not the commander of the guard. Right? He's a commissioner. Right? He's, I think he's a, he's a paid employee, right? He's not a volunteer. Is when when you when you want to contact Fish and Game, they say what county do you want to. So I said Hillsborough, and they said your contact person is Ray Green. Yeah. So I contacted him, and you saw my my email. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> if it was the commissioner, I don't think he would have come well, I mean, to our meeting anyway. But <laughs> well, it said. See, the the email He's says not one of the twelve or whatever. Well, the so email says <laughs> that's commissioner. What the question was, but well, the email says Commissioner Green. That's why I'm assuming that he's a commissioner. That, that, that's, that's their the title person. versus, yeah. So yeah. Well, you know, that's, fine. that's who it is. Okay. okay. All right. So that'll be great. I, it'll be good to have dialogue, mm -hmm. and it may help us in this situation that we're having now. Right. Well, it would be nice to, to bounce off the, the idea of the conservation officer, too. Exactly. So. Yeah, I think it'll be good in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had... We, I used to have a really good relationship with the ranger, I, yeah, um, in the area, and he's since retired. Um, I helped him with a couple of baiting situations and a couple of illegal tree stands, and it was a great relationship, but we just don't have that anymore. Okay. So I really don't have that contact, and I think this will come out of that, you know, maybe the new contact. He was very, in fact, I mean, you know how, I like to procrastinate. So, of course, I'm reading through the minutes. I'm like, oh, I was supposed to contact the fishing game. So I flipped out an email at, like, about 2 o'clock, and within a half hour he responded and said, sure, I'll come January 6th. I'm like, That's great. thank you. So he's making me look good. Good. <laughs> you, you didn't even have to tell us the backstory. I, <laughs> <laughs> I have to confess. <laughs> Have we received any other communication or correspondence that we need to discuss? If none, subcommittee updates. Wildcat Falls? Wildcat Falls. <coughs> okay. Wildcat Falls, we had a meeting, a subcommittee meeting on November 12th. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Mike Borbear for staining the kiosk. There was um, some graffiti on there, and Mike contacted DPW, got the correct stain, went and stained it, and returned the stain. Um, also, we the lock on the gate, we cannot get into it. Um, the key that, that we have in the little key thing goes to one lock, but somebody came in and unlocked it and put a new lock on and put our two locks somewhere else so we can't get in anymore. So I'm wondering if it's DPW's lock. So we're wondering if Gage could possibly contact DPW and ask them, or unless you want me to contact. No, come, come away. Okay. Yeah. This is the main gate to Wildcat. This is the main gate at Wildcat. Yeah, they, they should have used our lock. They should have used well, our lock. Even if, even if people need to put their own locks in, it's just lock the hasps together because like right. any person with their key to their lock is going to get the chain off. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. But so they, they so did locks in a lock locks, and then the chain is on each end of right. all the locks. And that way, any lock in the middle can be undone, and the whole thing is open. Right. No, okay. It was either them or it, I mean, it, it could have been PSNH. I mean, Eversource. I don't know if they have a key. I don't know because they they do have to maintain the the power lines through there. So. Okay. Well, it could have been a high school kid that went. <laughs> but how would they have gotten? <laughs> how, no, but our our lock. It's like they opened our lock, and then they just clicked them onto the the chain, so that's not doing anything. So whoever it was was able to get into the lockbox, get our key, unlock our lock, and then put their own lock on. Most likely it's somebody from the town. Is the key still in the lockbox? The key is still in the lockbox, but our lock. it only unlocks one lock. Right, but I'm saying the key doesn't unlock the lock that is currently locked. No, I understand, but you, you said you said someone got into the lockbox. 
Yes. They must have, because they unlocked our lock. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it could be Lori, but it could also be this, the, um, the wastewater department as well, because they have to maintain the sewer line that goes through there. And that has to be, you know, by EPA code, has to be maintained every so often. That's why they plow all the way to the river. Okay. So, so, it so Gage, while you're, sorry to interrupt Wildcat Falls, while you are inquiring with yep. DPW about. The, the bill for the first. Oh, well, yeah, add that to the list too. Um, but no, the um, <laughs> con conservation drive gate. Um, that is a service item for them to go and clean that, I forget what you call it, plunge pool. Yeah. They didn't go down there this year. And that road is washed out, something fierce. But the, the, the growth on that road tells me that they didn't go down there this year. I don't know if they need to go down there every year. They go and they'll walk down and inspect it. They don't need to go down there and clean it okay. all the time. Because it, that's the whole purpose. Well, why it was getting so gummed up is the fact that that, you know, where they put the netting down, mm -hmm. where, where we used to go down. Sure. That was so much eroding and it was washing all the sand into it. Now okay. that that's grown up, that doesn't fill up as good. Okay. So they may not be having to go down there. Service, they may not need yeah. to service it. Yeah, but they when they do go down there next, that road is. Are we asking them to fix it, or are we asking them to just be careful? Well, nec yeah, next time they go down there to look at the... If they can make any fixes. Take the, yeah, take a look at that road, because if they're going to have to get down there, that, that road is getting... Uh, it just needs a couple water bars, really. That's it. Would you like to finish Wildcat Falls? Sure. Um, I see you have some maps down there. You don't have Wildcat Falls maps, though, do you? Do not. Okay. Can I call Paper Graphics and ask him to print maps? Do I need to, I mean, is this something that they are doing, or is this something that we are paying for? Do I need to make they a motion to get money, you know? They have, they have printed our maps for free. Okay. Okay, should I call and ask and him if there will be a charge? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, we can, yeah, we can ask. All right, if there is a charge, do I need to come back to the, to the commission and ask for money? Yeah. All right, can I, I just? I have no idea how much it's gonna be because he's never charged us, so we have no. All right, <laughs> okay, now. all right, ask how much. We right. have a box of Horse Hill. We have no Greater Woods and no Wildcat Falls. I've only got two Greater Woods. Though. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd call that no, no Greater Woods. I put the 50 Greater Woods in the, um, in the two kiosks. Oh, good. I divided them. But in the kiosk at, by the middle school, somebody has photocopied maps and stuffed them in. So there's a whole, they're, they're not the same map as that. No, it's they're the school map. map. Yeah. It's the school map. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a teacher that's been doing that for years. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And every rain they get ruined. Well, it kind of it was hard for me to to put in our map, so I didn't put in as many. I put more up on BB Lane. So. Okay. And you, you put some maps there. Huh? Yeah, I put a few up there. Yeah. Did you put any in conservation? No. No. Okay. I didn't even know where conservation is. So. I can I can put. I have some conservation. Now. All right. I sure. did find Amherst though. <laughs> I'm in a the nice town? guy with a dog. I found the Amherst kiosk. Oh, <laughs> Amherst Road. Yeah, well. Yeah. Horse Hill no, kiosk. Uh, yeah, as uh, as I went down. Greater um, Road. Greater Road. Yeah. I just kept oh. going, and the road kept yeah. getting narrower. And then I saw some nice guy with a dog, and I said, this is a dumb question, but is there a kiosk with maps? He says, yes, over there, but there are no maps there. That's no Amherst. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Amherst. Yeah, they, they did use our, our map mm -hmm. in the kiosk. Yeah. But there's no mailbox to put maps, so right. they didn't get any maps. Anyway, so we also took a walk, um, Liz Petrides and I, with Officer Dudash, um, and we went to see 
the infamous circle, and we broke down the circle. We, Officer Dudash, dis determined that no tree was taken down. The, what looked like a root, there was a root from another tree that had kind of popped up. Um, he felt that there had been burning there. Um, we asked him if it was worthwhile to put a camera up, and he said it wasn't really worth tying up a camera because we had broken the circle down. So that hopefully is done. Um, there were gunshots on the New Hampshire DOT sign, like target shooting. So Officer Dudash had just pointed out that in the event that anyone hears gunshots where they shouldn't be, that they should call the police. Um, one of the things we discussed at the meeting was we do want to try to have our moonlit snowshoe walk. So I will contact Eileen Cabanel <coughs> and um, Chief Roy and the town council and the planned dates for that would be January 10th. If that doesn't work, February 9th. If that doesn't work, March 9th. Um, I can't go January, t I'm sorry, that was January 10th. I can't go January 10th. So if we do end up having it that day, if anybody wants to volunteer to go in my place, that would be super, because otherwise it boils down route, to, pardon out, me? Do you have a route picked out? Um, the, the route that they said would be the best is to go, um, what did they do? They want to do the main falls loop and then turn left and cross the power lines. Does that make sense? All right. Yeah, I mean, Liz knows the woods like the back of her hand, so. Um, and Andrew was planning on being there. Um, you know, Karen's not able to do it. And again, I won't be able to do it just because I've, I've got, um, Lainey's gonna be traveling the next day, so. Um, but anyway, so yes, we will make sure that um, once everybody knows that, you know, once the town manager, or town council, and Chief Roy know, make sure we've got our parking and everybody knows to bundle up and bring a flashlight, no alcohol, all that good stuff. So I'll keep you all posted on that. And that is that. Our next meeting for Wildcat Falls is January 7th. Just a quick note, Ray Green is a commissioner with the Fish and Game Commission. He represents Hillsborough County. Yes. Our conservation officer is Sean McFasden. Sean? Who's gonna, yeah. who's gonna meet us on the January 6th? Ray it's Green. gonna be the commissioner. Ray Green. Who's on the commission who reports to the governor and they oversee the fish and game. I don't think that's who you're intending to call, right? Don't we want somebody that's out in the field? The person in the field for us is Sean McFadzen. How do you spell that? M-A-C, capital F-A-D-Z-E-N. He's one of the guys that's always on uh, Northwoods Walk. Yeah. Maybe he can come too? No, probably not. He's taking He's what? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we'll have a good conversation with him if one of them is here. He, he was very, very, I was impressed with how, how quickly he responded and how responsive he was. Yeah. So he's like, look forward to it. I'm like, great. I'm going to let him do all the talking. Is it here with the No. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know. The He's fairly, fairly new. So yeah. what was Sean's He's title again? Fairly He's the conservation <laughs> officer. So he's the guy out in the woods? Yes. Or for, on television? For our region, which is region 44, which covers Merrimack, Nashua, Hollis, Amherst, you know, quite a bit. Covers like nine towns. He's also on Northwoods? Mm-hmm. Okay, are you done with Wildcat? I am, thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, Mike. <laughs> Habitually looked at Cindy. Yeah, we haven't had a meeting. Okay. Yeah, Greater Woods has not had a meeting either. The only updates I had were uh, the washout there and uh, a couple of trees got taken down in the storm and we've since cleaned them up. There's, there's one on... Silverfish. Yes. Yeah, I'm getting that tomorrow fell this weekend after I was out there. Thank you. I figured, I figured you already knew about yeah. it. <laughs> I was going to do it before this meeting, but it got dark. All right. So um, do we want to do yeah, presentation of the minutes first? 
Has everybody looked at the October 21st minutes? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes with changes. Second. We should probably talk about it again. I didn't see anything that needed to be changed. They were very clean. Not one thing. My suggestion would be more for clarity or factual correction than it would be a typo or anything, but on um, page two, it would be, um, it'd be lines two and three. So basically, it says the commission covered the cost of the position for the first year, which included the purchase of a four-wheel vehicle. I mean, you'd probably want to write drive, four-wheel drive vehicle. Um, but then, correctly, it should say, and will cover half of the cost for the second year, because that has not happened yet. Right. Uh, similarly, in the, as it keeps going, in the third year, the position will become part of the town budget, not became, because it's just it's still an experiment. Really, all I could find. Okay. Great. All those in favor? Beautiful. Okay. So you voted seven yes. voting. So seven zero. Seven zero zero. zero. Great. All right. No more public comment. Commissioner comments. Eric, would you like to begin? Uh, I've already really given all my thoughts on the um, NHACC meeting. Um, really good time. Uh, I do have some materials like pamphlets and business cards, stuff like that, if anyone wants to know about like pavement. I know there was a pavement salesman there. Um, <laughs> and just making an offer, uh, I also got seeds for milkweed, which is uh, for monarch butterflies. Uh, I can't plant them anywhere on my property, so if anyone wants them, you can take them. Well, I was planting a wildcat, but obviously I'm not very, don't have green <laughs> thumb out there. <laughs> 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 Who knows? Maybe it'll bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> Tim? No, just um, so we discussed this a w you know, not too long ago, the GZA project. Um, given the fact that March is, is the time to be looking at um, ARM funds, mm -hmm. uh, we probably want to try and get the yeah. final report from GZA soon so we'll have some time I'll to digest contact, it. Yeah, I'll contact Tracy and see what the so, schedule's before the schedule reflects. Yeah, so that way we can have some time to react. Not sure there'll be money released this March like there was last March, but, <coughs> but um, so, but we're going to need some time with that report. So that's all. Yeah, Saturday. I'm not sure I can be there. It's kind of last minute, but yeah. I think it's probably the right thing to do. Gage, wear orange in the woods. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot, a lot of hunting going on right now. So. Yeah. Mike? No comment? And nothing. Nothing? All set. Uh, last meeting I did mention I was attending a training speaking for wildlife through UNH Cooperative Extension. Oh, yeah. So I did do that. It took place in um, the Squam Lake Science Center in Holderness. It was a great afternoon. Um, you didn't attend. You gave it, right? Uh, no, it was a training oh. to for the folks who want to oh. present. So we had about a dozen folks that got trained on. There's a number of presentations in a kit. And so I went through one, sort of showed how it worked, showed how to get the materials and how to um, market them. So at some point, that might be something maybe the commission wants to support. And we could talk about uh, wildlife type things, habitat type things. They've only got about eight topics currently ranging from New Hampshire nat natural history to very specific things like uh, uh, a bat, there was a bat fungus one. Oh. Uh, White snout disease. White nose. Yeah. 
Ow. Wait, don't do that. Wait, yeah, no. they, they run the gamut, but um, <laughs> I kind of envisioned maybe going to the outdoor classroom or perhaps that new spot down uh, at Wasserman Outdoors. I like the idea of being able to present. I have to figure out the PowerPoint thing. Get a little Pico projector and I'll project on the side of a tent I'll erect or something, but uh, we'll figure it out. So that's, that's it for me. I, I'm sorry, Matt, I do have one other thing. So, so last Saturday, we as a commission met at Wasserman Conservation Property and took a walk in the woods. Um, I have put the report together. I'm going to submit it. It's fairly similar to previous reports, uh, and I've generated the map. And I'm going to, I'm going to, unless you all want to review it first, I'm going to just submit it to the state um, and to the town council as as we're required to do per our LSIP agreement from many years ago. I'm also going to provide the state on the pictures that I took during the walk uh, and pictures from previous walks because they've asked in the past if I would provide pictures. So, so I've got a DVD prepared of all that. It's sitting out there and Sharon has, has agreed, Sharon downstairs has agreed to send it to the state for me because I don't have the packaging or the postage to do that. So, so I just figured I'd give you a quick update. I will, of course, copy all of you on the report. So. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tim, and that was my commissioner comment, and you put it much more <laughs> succinctly than I could, so thank you very much. <laughs> All right, and uh, not time for adjourning yet. <laughs> um, I guess I'll make the motion. So a motion by Member Karen that the board by roll call go into non-public session pursuant to RSA 91-A, colon 3, 2, D, consideration of the acquisition, sale, or lease of real or personal property, which if discussed in public would likely benefit a party or parties whose interests are adverse to those of the general community. Second. Thank you, Gina. <clears throat> so via roll call, how do you vote, Eric? Don't yeah, your nay. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, do I not? Do it's I only full-time members. Okay. I thought it was all. Okay, uh, let me go in order then. Vice Chair Perkins. I'm in favor. Commissioner Rosati. In favor. Commissioner Bovier. In favor. Did I get the name right? Boisvier. Oh, Boisvier. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Glenn. In favor. <laughs> Commissioner Perry. <laughs> Councilor Albert. In favor. And I am in favor as well. All right. So now we are in non-public.